Hi everyone, this is Goody K3NG. This is a tutorial on the integration of the Nexion touch display with the K3NG Arduino rotator controller. It's also a tutorial on the API. You can use this to create your own custom display using the Nexion editor, or you can use the provided base HMI example in your own projects, customizing it as you please. I have open here the Nexion editor, I have the current base HMI file. This is intended to give you both the API variables that you can use in your own project if you're starting an HMI file from scratch. It's also intended to show you an example implementation using the API. So the first screen here, or page I should say, in uh, the Nexion editor, page zero is API. In the live example when you run this, this screen is not displayed. This just is used to hold all of the variable objects here that make up the API, and we'll go over them in detail here in a moment. You'll also see over here in uh, program.s there are global variables that are also API variables. These are prefixed with lowercase g as in golf, and the other uh, variables, which are mainly text variables, variable objects, are prefixed with v as in vector. Basically, anywhere that there was an API variable that was a number, an integer. I implemented it as a global variable because they're easy to write to. There's less traffic on the serial port to write to these variables. Each of these variables has a function. If you go over to the wiki, the link is uh, down in the video description, I have an API variable guide here that shows you exactly what each API variable does. The way this works, the Arduino periodically updates these variables regardless of what page you're showing on the Nexion display. Some variables are updated very frequently, like uh, azimuth uh, and elevation. Those naturally change a lot. They can change a lot. Other items like, say, the sun and moon elevation and azimuth, they don't change rapidly, so we don't update those strings as uh, often. So within the HMI file, you'll see that all of these API variables are duplicated on each page. They are defined as local variables. And you may ask, well, why don't you just create them once on one page and declare them as global variables? Very good question. The problem is, even though they're global variables, if you are not on that page, if that page is not displayed in the Nexion uh, display at the time, and you try to update that variable via the serial port, it will fail. I don't know why this is. That's just the way the, uh, the Nexion code, the operating system, is designed. So I reverted to using local variables and duplicating them on each page. I know it's not very efficient, however, it's very easy to duplicate these variables. You can just go in, select them holding down the control key. You can select multiple ones, do copy, and go to another page and do paste and drop them in there. So it's very easy to recreate all of these variables. However, we don't know what variables are available on what pages. They don't all have to be there. At least the, the Arduino does not know. So we do what I call spray and pray. The Arduino, via the serial port, updates all of the variables. So what we do with these API variables in the Nexion code here is take the values and we poke them into various controls. We can do that several ways. I do it in the example here with a uh, timer. This particular timer here is in the main page is executed every 100 milliseconds. So this line, for example, T clock, that is right here in the corner. That is the clock text control. And we pull the, uh, the clock string from V clock.txt, V being a variable. This is one of the API variables. So every 100 milliseconds, we pull the value that, that is in that variable that the Arduino updated, and we put it into that control. Same thing with the GPS string, the grid string, coordinate string. 
Very simple. You'll see the statuses here. There's another timer in here. TM update 500 milliseconds, and as you could probably figure out, this one is executed every 500 milliseconds. This is the update for the azimuth and elevation heading readouts. We don't do this as frequently, so it gives it a, the display a little bit of hysteresis, so the noise or whatever that you have with the headings where they change a, a tenth of a degree, it doesn't make the, uh, the screen strobe badly. So we just do this update every half millisecond. Here in the wiki, in the API guide, you'll see all of the API variables defined. Like I mentioned before, we have strings, variable objects, prefix with the letter V, and we also have global variables, prefix with the letter G, and those are integers. We have three status strings. The most important one is status string number one. These are messages uh, like rotation, up, down, counterclockwise, clockwise, target headings, strings two and three are less important messages relating to parking, overlap. I intend to add more messages in strings two and three in the future. We have the azimuth and the elevation and string variables. With the string variables, we show decimal places. The azimuth and elevation is also available in a global integer variable. Now the Nexion display does not handle decimals, doesn't have floating point types, so these are strictly integers, no decimal places, but I put those in there in case anybody would like a numerical value that they could put in mathematical expressions. We expose in the API both the real azimuth and uh, the raw azimuth. The raw azimuth is the one that can go above 360 and is used to represent a continuous, I guess you call it numerical string of rotation if you have overlap or you can go around the dial several times. We also have integer uh, status variables here. These are just numbers that directly uh, translate to various statuses for azimuth and elevation. Also the uh, clock status is available as an integer. GPS status, grid locator coordinates, all strings. And here we get into some bitmapped integers. So you need to use code to OR these and determine if the bits are set. So go into great detail here, all of the bit values. These are various lesser important statuses and states but uh, we do expose them just in case you would uh, like to use them. System capabilities, these are compile time options and features that you select. And then there's moon, azimuth and elevation, sun, azimuth elevation also in strings, and the moon and sun status. So right now, at the time of this filming here, I would say about 95% of the rotator controller functionality is implemented in here, but honestly, for the majority of users, I say it will probably cover 99.9% .9 of the use cases. This is how we get data from the rotator controller to the Nexion display. You're probably asking, how do we do commands from the Nexion display to the Arduino to make it do certain things? So, what we do, we send on the serial port commands from the Nexion display to the Arduino. And you'll see here, I'll click on the up button and on the touch press event, that's when somebody presses the button. This is a print serial command and we do a backslash question RU. So you send the extended backslash commands over the serial port and the Arduino rotator controller will interpret those just as though you were on the serial monitor connected to the control port and you were issuing those commands. You can see those commands over in the wiki in uh, 820, command reference. We've got all the Yezu commands, EasyCom, and then we get into the backslash commands and the extended backslash commands, which are probably the majority of the ones that you're going to use. So you'll see here backslash question mark RU is rotate up. So that's how we implement uh, rotating up. Clockwise, backslash question mark RL. Rotate left. Very simple. 
Pretty much all of these commands that are in here you can utilize in buttons sending them over the serial port. But keep in mind that currently the way the API is constructed, the Nexion display will not receive a response back from the Arduino. Some of these commands don't make sense in this context using them from the Nexion like query azimuth or read clock. You can certainly send them on a serial port, but there's not going to be any output coming back from the Arduino to the to the Nexion for that command. But any of this information here for any of these commands, obviously you can get them from the API variables and use them in building uh, your display. You'll notice here that I have a double backslash. This is an escape. You need when you're sending a backslash, you need to escape the backslash. So we do backslash backslash. So just to show you that I'm not lying here, I will go into debug mode. We'll uh, go over to the display. I'll hit a button here and you can see what is sent to the serial port. This shows it in hex. If you click the S here, there you go. There's the command backslash question mark RL and then a hex uh, zero delta, which is, I believe, a carriage return. That shows you how that uh, operates. In the base HMI file, I show you how you can set up your display to tell if it's connected to an Arduino controller that's either azimuth only or azimuth and elevation. Here on the main page, I have code in the pre-initialized event area. I look at the API variable GSC. I end that with a value of 16. If we go over to GSC, this is the system capabilities API variable. Value 16 is for elevation. So we test here to see if bit 16 is set. If we AND it and x equals 16, that means we have an azimuth and elevation system. So within this code here, we make uh, certain controls visible. We make azimuth small visible, azimuth large we make disappear, and we also make the uh, elevation uh, text labels and the elevation uh, readout visible as well. If it's an azimuth only system, we switch things around. Small azimuth label and small azimuth text box disappear. The large azimuth label and text box for the heading appears. Elevation we make disappear. And we also make the up and down buttons disappear. So this is one way that you can have it real time, have your HMI file detect what personality rotator controller is and have it change things on the fly at runtime. There's a way to test this. We're going to grab the GSC there and I'm going to go into debug mode and we're on the main screen here and they've got this cool little command area over here where you can drop commands in. I'm going to go ahead and make that be a value of 16 We'll, uh, we'll reload the uh, form, or the page I should say, just to get it to look at that, that pre-initialize event code there. And you'll see now that we're in azimuth and elevation mode. And I can flop it back. I can sit here all day and do this, and we're back in azimuth only mode. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now let's look at how you can do debugging and see what's going on on the serial link between the K3NG Arduino rotator controller and the Nexion display. Go into Rotator Debug Log Activation. First thing we'll look at here is what the Arduino is sending to the Nexion display. And I will compile and upload. And let's go over to the serial monitor and the unit has booted up and we will go into debug mode. There is a lot going on here. So what you see here is the function send nexion command and you're seeing all of the strings that are going across. These uh, you may recognize as being API variables, global variables, and uh, variable objects. This is data that is going across, like this right here. This is the azimuth heading. 
So you use slash D to turn debug logging on off. You'll also see the usual debug dump log in uh, this output. Now let's look at what's going the other way from the Nexion to the Arduino. And we will uncomment debug Nexion display serial receive, save the file, compile, and upload. And I'll do a slash D to activate debug logs. You'll see these little messages come up here. You can just ignore them. This is if the Arduino, sometimes it may be if the Arduino is accessing an API variable that doesn't exist. There's an error that comes back from the next display. We currently don't do anything with those in the code. Here I'll hit the up button and stop the debug log. And you'll see here, this command is a backslash command, ru, rotate up. So with this debugging, you can see what's going on as you press buttons and verify that uh, your code in the Nexion is actually sending uh, serial data over to the Arduino rotator controller. Let's take a quick look at the code in the Arduino rotator controller. There are two functions that uh, you need to be aware of if you're going to be delving into the code here for the Nexion integration. The first one's pretty small, pretty self-explanatory. Send Nexion command. We give that a uh, character string, and that gets sent over the uh, serial port. We just send the string out, and then we append it with FF, FF, FF. Uh, Nexion expects this at the end of every command. Where all the magic really happens is within service Nexion display. This is called by loop. Each go around we call it once and it services the API variables at uh, various intervals. These intervals are currently set right here. These settings are going to be going into the settings file as the code matures, but this is what I was mentioning earlier that uh, some API variables we update very frequently, some frequently, and some less frequently. These are all in milliseconds. I may tweak these some more, but I think the same basic concept is going to continue with some variables being serviced more often than others depending on the type of data. And the first thing we do, we service the serial port, see if there's any bytes incoming, see if there's anything sitting in the buffer. We uppercase it, and we look to see here, basically if it's a backslash command, if we see a backslash, we start listening, and we collect that in a buffer. As soon as we have a carriage return, or we hit the end of the buffer, if it's gotten filled up, we send that over to process backslash command. This is the same function that we use with the control port to process backslash commands, and uh, we clear the buffer out then. If we've gathered a bunch of bytes in the receive buffer, and they've been sitting in there for more than three seconds, we clear the buffer out quite simple. And this is where we get into updating the API variables within the Nexion display. I have this pretty well commented here. These uh, names correspond with what's in the documentation. You'll see here how we form the command string. And that simply gets sent using uh, send Nexion command. This is where we do the various bit mapping, variables, status string. This is a pretty big one. We handle it for azimuth only and azimuth and elevation. And of course, what code wouldn't be complete without a to-do list? Actually, I've gotten these done so they can come off the list. Updating various things. So the, the code is pretty straightforward, as always. I, I try to write code that's easy to understand and not do any hotshot black belt developer tricks that uh, folks may have trouble understanding or updating the code. So I hope this video has helped you out. If you need support, I strongly encourage you to join the Radio Artisan Groups IO group, where myself or Plenty of other folks will be happy to help you out.
73.